Hey guys, welcome back. It's Sid. I'm back with another video. And today I want to tell you guys how you can prepare your CV to get a role as a data analyst or as a data professional. Now, having a CV is critical if you want to land yourself in an interview and applying for jobs is hard as it is. So here I've got five top tips for you guys to help you polish your CV and ensure that you can get your CV recognized by job recruiters and by hiring managers and get you that interview that you're looking for. So without any any further delay, let's make a start. So number one, and the first tip I have for you guys is to use a skills-based CV format. Now, traditionally, most CVs are chronologically formatted. So what does that mean? So most CVs, when you look at them today, are ranked by order of history. So you start with your most recent job role, and then you go back as you move down the page through your historic career. Now, the problem with that is those types of CVs are essentially just descriptions of roles. So you talk about, I did this role, this is my job title, I work from this time period to that time period. And the thing that's missing in those kind of CVs CVs is the need to highlight your skills. And remember, being a data professional requires you to shine and shout about your skills. So a skills-based CV completely flips a script. So with a skills-based CV, you're following that same order of career history. However, this time around, what you're doing is you're highlighting key skills that you've gained across each and every individual role that you've had. So these are not just key skills that you've gained, but key skills that you've learned, that you've applied, and then you talk about the business results as well. So you'll have a description of each role, your job title, and then you'll also have a line which talks about the skills that you actually acquired during that job. So a skills-based CV, guys, is essential to get you recognized and get your CV picked up by hiring managers. So make sure you use a skills-based CV. Follow the, the rest of this video because right at the end, I'll have a, an example link for you to, get, to check out. And this is a CV that I personally use. So this is a template that you guys can use as well. Tip number two is to make sure you start with a personal statement at the top of your CV. A personal statement is a snapshot of your career history, who you are as a professional, where you are at the moment and where you want to be. So in your personal statement, you might discuss things about how many years of experience you have in a given industry or whether you're still studying or whether you're looking for a data career in a particular field and then about the skills that you have. So again, focusing on those skills, talking about what skills you have at the moment, what skills you're looking to acquire and then where you're looking to land a job, what industry you're looking to get that job and what kind of team you want to work in. So use your personal statement to kind of highlight those kind of things. It's a really nice little paragraph that helps readers pick up your CV, understand who you are and then make a judgment of whether or not you're the right fit for that kind of role. So I'll give an example again at the end of this video on how an example personal statement that I've made that I've used that you guys can use as well. Tip number three is to focus on your strengths and highlight your strengths. So different people have different strengths. Some people have really good strength with numbers. Some people are really good at coding. Others are really good at working with business and working with people. So throughout your CV, make sure you highlight where your key strengths are and you might want to reference them time and time again. So for instance, if you're good at working with people, you might want to talk about how you led a team, you worked with a team, you worked in an agile environment, you worked in a fast paced environment. If you're good at coding, Coding, you might want to talk about how you use Python, how you use SQL. Make sure you drop those references in throughout your CV. Focus on your strengths because your strengths are what will get you recognized when you get to interview stage. And even though your strengths may be unique to you, they will help you shine because when it comes to getting yourself a job in future, you want to focus and talk about your strengths and they are the talking points which will get you noticed and get you recognized. Tip number four is to add a portfolio section to your CV. So what do I mean by that? Typically CVs have career history, they have education, they have skills and they have references. But increasingly I'm seeing more and more CVs where people are adding a small portfolio section to their CV. So in your portfolio section you might want to talk about a product that you've built, an application that you built or a project that you've done outside of your regular work, outside of your regular day job. So portfolios are a great way to help you shine especially if you're a data analyst. For instance you might want to discuss an talk about sports, you might want to talk about health, you might want to talk about fitness, anything you want, any project that you've worked on, 
program is a great part to kind of include in your CV. Now, typically projects, if you're working on data projects, you want to develop them and showcase them on your GitHub profile. I'll talk about that in a future video, but for your CV, what you want to do is include a link to your GitHub projects. Now, typically those links are going to be very long, those URL links. So what you want to do is shorten them and you want to use a tool like Bitly. Bitly allows you to shorten your links to only a few characters and it's a nice and punchy way to get those links onto your CV. So check out Bitly to shorten your links and make sure you talk about your projects on a profile section within your CV. Tip number five is to add a personal interest section to your CV. Now this is something that's usually added right at the very end. It's a really important piece and I'll tell you why. When I come across CVs, a lot of CVs are very much career focused, professionally focused CVs. But what's often missing is that human element. So the personal interest section really allows you to shine as a human being and it tells the hiring manager that you're not just someone who breathes data day in day out but you're someone who actually has an interest and a life outside of data. Especially in the world of banking, a lot of bankers they work 24 7 so very few of them have a life outside of banking. So it's very critical and important that you talk about your personal interests beyond your work life or your study life. So you might want to talk about sports, you might want to talk about traveling, you might want to talk about food, you might want to talk about fashion, music, whatever interests you, make sure you capture those in the personal interest section. It's also a great point on which you can talk about other things, so things like studying towards certifications. So you might be studying towards a Tableau certification or an AWS certification or something similar, or you might be learning a new language, for instance. So again, use your personal interest section to talk about these points and it allows you to come across as a more of a human because when you're working in these data teams you'll find that people aren't robots you're working with other people as well many of them will be interested in all sorts of things and there'll be different people of different cultures so having a personal interest section is very important and that guys wraps up my top five tips for you guys if you want to land yourself a role as a data analyst and have a data analyst ready cv to get in front of recruiters and hiring managers but if you've watched this video so far you may want to watch a bit more because i've got a few more tips for you guys which i think will really help you stand out the other tip i want to talk about is adding references so if you have a cv and you're running out of space make sure you add and mention references are available on request right at the very end of your cv if you don't have a lot to talk about on your cv and you have a light cv say you have a one-page cv then add your references and not just talk about adding professional references but add a character reference or personal reference as well personal reference could be someone you've worked closely with someone who you know within the community someone who can talk about you as a person not just from a professional perspective but a personal perspective as well so having a, a personal reference will really help you stand out and make your cv stand out a little bit more the other top tip i have for you guys is to watch out for ats software ats stands for applicant tracking system. ATS systems are increasingly being used by companies to scan CVs and this is why many of you may not get a job or may find that you've applied for so many jobs but you never get selected for one and that's because more and more software applications are being used to pre-scan and pre-filter a lot of CVs. So to avoid that, to avoid your CV being chucked out by the ATS system, I've got a couple of tips for you. First one is to make sure you highlight and you mention keywords that are in the job description and add them to your CV. So if the job description talks about, for instance, data visualization, you want to make sure your CV contains the keyword data visualization. So treat it like you're doing some sort of SEO exercise. Make sure you take keywords from the job profile and drop that into your CV so you can, you can get a closer match between the two. And that way the ATS software will be able to recognize that you have a highly relevant CV because the job and the job keywords and key skills match what you've got on your CV. So make sure you tailor every single CV to every specific job role is what I'm trying to say. And in doing so, you'll be able to avoid the ATS systems and ATS apps chucking your CV out the application process. Another tip I have for you guys is to tailor and match your CV with what you have on LinkedIn. If you don't already have a LinkedIn profile, then you definitely need to create one. But more and more companies are asking for your LinkedIn profile 
profile when you apply for a job. They want to see what you've got on your LinkedIn profile and they want to see whether there's more information on your LinkedIn profile, where you've got recommendations from past employees or colleagues on your LinkedIn profile. So make sure your LinkedIn profile kind of matches what you have in your CV and make sure the two of them supplement each other and support each other whenever you go out for job interviews, job applications, make sure your LinkedIn profile is up to date. And then lastly, guys, make sure you read your CV in close and thorough detail, not once, not twice, but do it three or four or five times. The reason why I say that is because you'll be surprised how many times you'll come across spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes in your CV. And they are the worst. When you read through a CV and you realize, oh my God, I applied for that job role and there was a spelling mistake on my CV, it will make you feel really guilty. So make sure you take the time to thoroughly read every line on your CV. Make sure there's no spelling mistakes mistakes, no grammatical errors, and that will help you make, just give you a feeling of confidence and more importantly, help any readers who are reading your CV not be distracted by any spelling mistakes or poor grammar. Believe me, it happens guys. These hiring managers and recruiters are reading thousands of CVs every month. So reading a CV with a bad spelling mistake kind of sets a bad example on who you are, what you're capable of promising. So make sure guys, your CVs are spelling mistake free and they are grammatically correct and if you want help to make sure your cvs are correct in terms of spelling and grammar use a popular app like grammarly grammarly will help you structure the wording on your cv and it'll highlight highlight any errors in terms of spellings as well and that's it guys that brings me to the end of the video i hope you've enjoyed this one i really think that you can make a huge difference to your cv if you treat it with a bit of love and you treat it with a bit of importance your cv ultimately is your foot in the door. Now, for a lot of people, they may not have a strong CV, but they may do very well at interview. But before you can get to an interview, you have to make sure you have a good CV. And even if you don't have a lot of experience or you don't have a lot of content to your CV, you can still talk about a lot of things like your personal interests. You can talk about in your personal statement where you want to go with your career and your life. You can even showcase projects. If you haven't got any real data experience or you're looking to get into a data role and you don't have any data experience, make sure your project portfolio section in your CV is as, as rich as possible with some great examples of work and projects that you've done. So guys, I hope this video has really helped you. Do drop me any questions or comments that you may have. What I will do for you guys is I'll include a link to a template that I use to help me get my job at HSBC Bank as a data visualization analyst. I've kind of made it a bit generic, but you can use this template to help and then format and populate it with your content and with your experience education and skills and use that template to apply for your very own jobs as well. Hope you liked the video. Please do subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.